Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I want to talk about the brand new Marvel Multiverse role-playing game. So this is a big, big change, and it means a lot for Dungeons and Dragons. So first of all, Dungeons and Dragons is the uh, the top role-playing game in the world. After five decades, nothing has even come close to replacing it or even matching it. Right, like. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is able to complete to defeat the entirety of the tabletop role playing game industry single handedly. All combined, they can't even catch it. Right. So the reality, but Dungeons and Dragons is the tip of the spear when it comes to the tabletop role playing experience. Right. So other people attempt to do tabletop role playing with other games. Right. So when other major games come out, it does impact the tabletop role playing game activity. I don't like to use the word tabletop role-playing game industry because I don't think it exists. I think Dungeons and Dragons is an actual tabletop role-playing. Dungeons and Dragons is an industry. The table all OSR and all indie tabletop role-playing games combined do not even constitute an industry. And the reason why is I don't think it can actually even I don't think I think if you could count on two hands the number of people who work in professional uh, tabletop role-playing on on two hands, right? Like, that don't have other jobs and other things like that, right? But this is a major change in tabletop role-playing game activity. And the reason why was licensed games, licensed tabletop role-playing games, have been in major, major trouble for a long time. And what has happened with the Marvel, Marvel Multiverse, the new 2023 Marvel Multiverse uh, role-playing game is... I never thought would happen. I never thought Marvel would actually clear, would actually approve another Marvel tabletop role, another Marvel tabletop role playing game. We've had Phase Rip. Um, I I don't own that, and the reason why is uh, it's not cheap, right? I would love to own a copy, but I know there's a ton of people who love the whole Phase Rip system and love the chart and all that. And I did own it at one point. It, it got sold many, many years ago. And I would love to own it again, but I think it's very expensive at this point. But I'm not a then guy. I'm a now guy, right? Um, but to be clear, I do own two copies of the Marvel tabletop role-playing games. And that is not even... And there have been some that I won't even list here. But the highlights are the phase rip, right? The legacy of the Marvel tabletop role-playing game is the phase rip copy I own the Saga copy with all the cards, with all the books, and I'm incredibly proud of that. It's one of the greatest elements of my tabletop role-playing game collection. I'm very proud that I own it. I also own Margaret Weiss's um, version that came out maybe five, ten years ago, right? And um, and that was very interesting. Actually, that was uh, it had a bad rule system, and it died pretty quickly. It died within a year, really. Um, but I, after that, I never thought Marvel would approve another uh, tabletop role-playing game. And the reason why is tabletop role-playing games are massively a threat to any licensed property. And the reason why is you could see it right now. Like SAG-AFTRA is is striking right now. They're like, nobody tells stories but us, right? AIs aren't allowed to tell stories. What do you think of, what do you think of the idea of you and me telling stories that a Hollywood writer can't tell right now. We can we can actually write a Marvel story and a DC story because actually we can write a Marvel story right now with permission, air quotes, right? Mar Disney is saying, "Hey, tell stories with our characters, and then tell the world what you told what with the story you told." That's astounding, right? Like that is incredible, right? So the reality is, I think it's really interesting because because I think. Marvel would have really liked this to been on Dungeons and Dragons, right? But the 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 connection right now is Dungeons and Dragons will not allow you to they will not allow you to spin up a intellectual property version of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Now there are some weird exceptions. Certainly Rick and Morty is a very odd exception. And the Stranger Things uh, world is a, is a strange exception. But with a few exceptions, they won't allow it. So I think Marvel would have loved there to have been a Dungeons and Dragons Marvel tabletop role playing game, but they can't. And the reason why is D- Dungeons and Dragons realizes what it is. It has it has the best. It is like you don't bro- you don't fix something if it ain't broke. And right, right now, Dungeons and Dragons relationship it it massively connects to licensed properties. But they want that 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 connection to only be on the miniatures and on the terrain side, right? So right now, Dungeons and Dragons' real connection 
to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Marvel Comic Book Universe and the Marvel Novel Universe and the Marvel Audiobook Universe is the same. They're saying, okay, we got you. You'll be able to play all your Marvel games within the Dungeons & Dragons sphere. You just need to wait for LEGO Dragon's Keep Journey's End. And once that clicks fully, then you'll have every minifig you need because LEGO has made them, right? And you'll put them right next to your Dungeons & Dragons miniatures, right? And you could run Marvel with LEGO Dungeons & Dragons. But so, but Marvel was like, we want our own role-playing game. Again, we want to bring it up. And I'm, a, I'm astounded that they did it. Now, I will say, they did it with Matt Forback, right? And uh, he is, and she, why did they do it with Matt Forback? Because he's all Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like he actually worked with Gary Gygax direct. He and he comes straight from the Dungeons and Dragons world, right? And he and because he worked side by side with with Gary Gygax, he is one of the best game designers in the world. And the new six one six system that they that they spun up because Dungeons and Dragons would not fully embrace them beyond miniatures and terrain as a, as a tabletop role play. They're saying, yeah, of course you can, run, you can run Marvel stories with Dungeons & Dragons. We'll provision you with all the terrain you need and all the all the miniatures you need through Legos, right? So that you're, um, you know, so that you're you have the miniatures you need. But we're not going to do a breakout Marvel property. And the reason why is there'd be no end of the licenses that would come to D&D. And they know they need to remain focused because they know in the past when they've gotten in trouble, when they've gotten in trouble is saying yes to everything. They need to remain focused, right? So the reality is I'm extremely excited that the Marvel multiverse role-playing game has been created. I do feel bad for Marvel that uh, D&D would not bring them under the umbrella. I think that would have been pretty nice to do that. Um, and the reason why I think they should have done that is because the, the Rick and Morty box set exists. I also have to say Marvel really could not have built pick a better designer than than Matt Forbeck. He I think he, from everything I've seen of the game, he has really knocked it out of the park with this. And and I love the idea that licensed games who are not given permission to be under the D&D uh, umbrella have some outlet. So and, and if you're going to do it, do it right and they did. Matt Forbeck is a phenomenal game designer. He sat right, and the reason why is he sat right next to Gary Gygax. So the reality is, that's great. You know, I, I'm I'm all for it, and I'm really excited that they were able to make this happen. And I'm very, and I have to say, I'm proud of Disney for reestablishing a Marvel tabletop role playing game. I wish it could have been under D and D more directly. It's only under D and D indirectly right now, but that's the world we live in. Not everything's perfect. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.